Welcome to the Year of the Spirit Life, where we are experiencing the Zoe, which is the God kind of life, the kingdom life. That is why I'm bringing to you kingdom divine messages that are meant to transform your mentality and to transform your mindset for you to be able to live according to God's original plan of dominion and rulership. So grab your Bible, your notebook, and your pen for you to write down the vision that you are going to walk through in this coming year. Be blessed as you watch. Thank you for joining us for another spirit-filled message with Prophet Fadzai brought to you by Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide. We bring comfort to God's people through the revelation of the word and prayer. We hope that this message will be a blessing to you and help you understand the kingdom and enjoy the spirit life. Now, let's get into the message. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Tell your neighbor and say, good morning. You are blessed in Jesus' name. You are fruitful in Jesus' name. Let's talk about God's time a mystery. Tell your neighbor, God's time a mystery. Tell your neighbor again, God's time a mystery. So we'll take today's reading from the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. Our proof text will be from 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. And for further reading, when you go home, you can read Exodus chapter 2, verse 1, going down the whole story. And you can also read Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, and Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. 1 Samuel 17, verse 17, our proof text for today. And when you're at home, you can read Exodus 2, verse 1, Exodus 12, verse 1, John, I mean, um, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, and Luke 2, verse 1 to 4. Let's read 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. Now, Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are doing and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed him. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David, verse 22, left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the men, they all fled from him in great fear. They all fled from him in great fear. May God bless the reading of this word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God's time a mystery. 
Why am I going to share with you this message today? Because I want to understand you to know. I mean, I want to make you to understand, rather, how you can know your season and your time. Hallelujah. Because we always hear people saying, God's time is the best time. We always hear people leaving out certain opportunities because they believe it is not yet God's time for them. Hallelujah. We have seen people who have failed in their lives and they said, I leave it in God's hands. It's not yet God's time. When my time comes, I'm going to experience this breakthrough. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that many of you have missed out God's time and you thought it was not yet God's time. From the story we read, David has been assigned by his father Jesse to go into the battlefield where the brothers were fighting against the Philistine army. And David was given two instructions that go and take this food to your brothers, number one. Number two, go and see how they are doing and come back to me with a report. And then David went and when he arrived from the scripture we read, the Bible said the time he arrived, the armies were rushing to the battle lines so that they can have a fight. They were shouting their war cries, preparing for a fight. And then when that happened, Goliath, <laughs> came out as usual and he spoke against the army of God while David was hearing. And then the Bible says David left the food that the father had given him with another keeper and then he ran towards the battlefield. Hallelujah. I want you to see something and understand something that is going to be very prophetic for your life today in the name of Jesus. Jesse did not send David to go and kill Goliath. Jesse did not send David to go on the battlefield. He sent David to go and deliver the food and see how the brothers were doing. But when David arrived in the battlefield, it led to David to kill Goliath. So according to Jesse, the time was for David to deliver the food as a messenger and to come back with reports. According to God, it was the season for David to kill Goliath. So David, if he was not getting a revelation of God, he would have entered God's time and deliver food and get information and go back home. Yet it was God's time. But God did not say, this is my time. I'm sending you now to go and kill Goliath. Am I speaking to somebody? Many of us, we have entered into God's time. And we have faced resistance and attacks and challenges. And we concluded that this is not yet God's time. Because the brothers of David, they rebuked him. What are you doing here? Where are you going? When it was his time and God's time for him to deliver Israel. If you look at the book of Exodus chapter 2, we learned that God brought forth a man called Moses. Moses was born from the book of Exodus. He was born as a deliverer of the children of Israel out of Egypt. But the moment Moses was born, Pharaoh was killing all the male children. So according to a carnal mind, it was a very bad time for Moses to be born because it was a time of all the sons to be killed. But according to God, it was his time for a deliverer of Israel to be born. Are you seeing it? 
When Jesus was born, hallelujah, Herod put a decree that every male child that is two years and below must be dead. And then God brought time, I mean, God brought Jesus at that very moment. According to us as humans, it was not a good time for Jesus to be born because Herod was going to kill him. But according to, G according to God, it was a perfect timing for God to release Jesus here on earth. Are you aware that you have tested God's time and you have pulled out of it because you think that when it's God's time, everything must flow. Believers think that when it is your time, when it is now God's time, it means there is no challenge, no difficulty, no setback, no delay. In most cases, when it is God's time, one of the signs to show you it is God's time, resistance. Am I speaking to somebody? The man who was healed in the book of Mark 2, the man who was healed was, we know that he was healed, but before the healing, there was a crowd by the door stopping him from entering the house until the brothers had to break the roof. So before his healing, there was a resistance by the door. The brothers could have went back home with a sick person, believing that yet it's not yet Jesus' time for him to heal him, yet it was God's time for his healing. Ask your neighbor, how many times have you withdrawn? Ask your neighbor, how many times have you withdrawn? How many times have you pulled out of God's assignment because you thought it's not yet time. Joshua 1 verse 6. God is assigning a new leader for Israel. Joshua. To carry on with the assignment. But then Joshua, I want you to listen to the words of God here. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. God himself is telling a person that he has chosen to lead his people in God's time but he is still telling the men to say be strong and be courageous. So which means even if you are in God's time God knows that there is need for you to be strong and be courageous because there will be resistance. There will be rejection. There will be those that don't believe in what you are doing at that present time. Are you understanding it? If you read the book of Luke, Mary is heavily pregnant. Luke chapter 2 verse 1. Mary is heavily pregnant with Jesus. And then the Bible says, he went to a place called Bethlehem. And when she entered Bethlehem, Bethlehem simply means a place of bread. And she's carrying the bread of life, Jesus, in the stomach, in the womb. Hallelujah. And she's en she has entered Bethlehem. Bethlehem has been prophesied by the old prophet, Pro prophet Mika. Micah 5 verse 2, that all you Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are the smallest among the clans, out of you shall come out a ruler for me. So there was a prophecy already that Jesus is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. But when Mary entered Bethlehem, they could not find a place to accommodate them so that they can give birth to Jesus. Yet it was God's time for Jesus to be born. But all the hotels, all the houses were full. No one accepted them. Are you understanding it? 
How many times have you been rejected? How many times have you been chased out? Rejected, resisted, rebuked? And you concluded that this is not God's time. For you to understand God's time, you must not look at situations from a carnal mind. Because the carnal mind will tell you about your qualifications, your gender, your history. You must always ask God for a divine revelation of why certain things are happening in your life. Am I speaking to you? When David arrived at the battlefield, his assignment was to deliver the food and get the message and go back home. But when he arrived, the war was about to start. And then Goliath came out and insulted the army of the Israelites. Number one thing that Goliath did, he said, you servants of Saul. And according to the revelation of David, the army of the Israelites were not servants of Saul, but servants of the Most High God. So which means Goliath was already insulting David's identity. Am I speaking to somebody? How many times has your identity been insulted and you did not do anything about it? Hallelujah. He got angry because his God was insulted by Goliath. If you are writing, write this down. Very important. Whatever you confess shall be tested. Whatever you confess shall be or will be tested. That is why when we come from Sunday service here and you declare, you say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the first and not the last. On Monday, your confession is going to be tested. Are you standing genuinely on what you have been declaring? If you pass the test, you enter God's time. So many of us, tomorrow is God's time for you. But when the testing of your confession comes, you feel the heat, you feel the resistance, and you say, it's not my time yet. Then you pull back. Am I speaking to you? The Bible says, if you go down with the scripture, it says David went to a river and he picked up five stones. And he took one stone that he used to kill Goliath. I have taught this before, that the five stones that David picked up, he did not use all of them to kill the enemy. He only used one of them. And he kept the four stones in his bag. And I explained some time before that the four stones are simply representing the gospel, which is the first books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And I was teaching you that the gospel of the Lord Jesus was not the weapon that David needed to throw to Goliath. The gospel was good for David. Hallelujah. That's why he put the gospel in his bag and he took only one stone to use to attack the enemy while empowered by the gospel. Am I speaking to somebody? The gospel in the Bible or the word of God in the Bible is not a threat to the enemy. Let me say it again. The word of God that is just written here inside a book is not a threat to the enemy. It only becomes a threat when it is inside of you and you are living it, confessing it, meditating on it, then it becomes a weapon to the enemy. 
That is why you put the Bible under the pillow and the witches still come and beat you at night while the Bible is under the pillow. Because the enemy is not affected by the word that is not manifesting in your life. On the mountain when Jesus was being tempted, when the devil comes, Jesus would say, it is written. One, two, three, it is written. Jesus did not hold the Bible like this. Did not hold the Bible like this and point it to the devil and say, I rebuke you or I fight you. Hallelujah. Jesus, remember, in the beginning was the word and the word was with the Lord and the word was so which means Jesus was the living word. The gospel. So that's what the devil is afraid of. You becoming the living word. Not just this book. Hallelujah. So this book, the holy scriptures that are here, if we read them, meditate on them, they become part of us. Then we start living them. Doing what the scripture says. And then we overcome Goliath of our life. We don't throw the five stones. Hallelujah. To Goliath. We don't throw the five stones to Goliath. We throw one stone. One stone. Why? Because the four stones have become part of us. And they are the supporting structure of the one stone. Anything that you do as a believer that does not have backup of God, it is dangerous for you. Hallelujah. If you enter a relationship with the backup, with the backup of the Holy Spirit, if you start a business with the backup of the, Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, if you start a ministry, or if you start whatever you start with the backup of the Holy Spirit, even when you meet a challenge tomorrow, the Holy Spirit will still be your backup and take you out of the situation. But if you enter without God's backup, like what many of us do, we enter into things without God's backup, then when they are now beating us inside the arrangement, we start crying, oh God, why have you left me? Did you go with him when you entered into that? When you were going to Mashonis, did you go with the Holy Spirit? Now when Mashonisa is after you, you are saying, Lord, why have you forsaken me? So anything you do as a child of God, anything you do as a believer should always have the backup of God. Backup of the Holy Spirit. Even if people call you names, even if people attack you, say all sorts of things against you, and you have the backup of the Holy Spirit, Nothing will happen to you. Am I speaking to you? So David ended up killing Goliath and entering in, into God's time because he understood a revelation of God's time. We calculate God's time by the smoothness of things. We calculate God's time by a lot of people showing us love. Please, let's read Exodus 12, verse 1. I show you something. Listen very carefully to this scripture. Let's read it together on the screen there. You can just mark it in your Bible. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. Let's hear what the Lord said. This month is to be for you. This month is to be for you. The first month. The first month of your year. Let's read it again from verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. I want you to listen very carefully. These people are in Egypt. In Egypt, there is a certain calendar for Egypt. A certain season for Egyptians. Certain time zone for Egyptians. Then God is speaking to Moses and Aaron while they are still in the calendar of the oppressor. Verse 2, this month is to be for you the first month. 
the first month of your year. What does that mean? God is telling these people that we are, we are, we are in, in, in the month of, um, which month are we in now? May. We are in the month of May, and then God is coming to tell you that this month is going to be the first month of your year. Not the year of South Africa now, it's May 2022. And things are tight. There is unemployment. There is COVID. Maybe there is lockdown. And then God is appearing to you and saying, this month is going to be your first month. The first month of your year. Which means they were now being given their own calendar away from the calendar of Egypt. So they are in, they are in Egypt under the calendar of Egypt. But according to God, God is giving them a new season and new calendar. So if they were operating in the physical, they would not know that it's now God's time. It's our year now. It's our season. They would still remain in the season of Egypt. What happened next when they are now in their new year, new month of their year? Pharaoh did not give up. So although they were now in their new year, in their season, Pharaoh kept on pursuing them. Hallelujah. But God, if it's my month now, and it's my new season, why is Pharaoh keeping on pursuing me? I should experience peace, joy, happiness. Because it's my year, it's my season. That's what I'm explaining. That it can be God's time, it can be your season, and Pharaoh is still pursuing you. So don't let the pursuit of Pharaoh determine which season you are in. Are you understanding that? Don't let what people say to you determine the season you are in. Time of COVID, when everyone was locked down, most of us became poor. In the midst of that same situation, someone became a billionaire. Is it not true? If they had thought that it's God's will for everyone to be locked down, it is God's time for us to lose all these things. Let the will of God be done. Would they have experienced what God intended for them? No. Because they were not moved by the situation. They were not moved by what was happening at that present moment. So even you must not be moved by what is happening around you. You must always yearn to hear what God is saying over the situation. And then you enter God's time. Before we pray, let me show you another scripture at Cana. The first, first miracle that Jesus did. That has been taken out of context by many people who drink alcohol. Even some believers in the church here. They say, why should I not drink? The first miracle of Jesus was of alcohol. So, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana, at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus said, Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, or when the wine was finished, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. If you reply like this to your mother, you are in trouble. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. Another version says, my time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars and the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, 
fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some, of, some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tested the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guest, the guest has had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. So now the wine came out. I want you to see something before we pray. That there was a challenge there was a problem that wine was finished. And then the disciples, the mother of Jesus, came to Jesus and told Jesus that the wine is finished. And then Jesus replied and said, why are you bothering me? Because my time has not yet come. Hallelujah. And then Jesus went on to just tell the disciples that whatever he tells you to do, do it. And then when Jesus told them what to do, a miracle happened. God's time happened. But Jesus had said, it's not yet my time. But we are seeing Jesus' time happening. Why? Because there was a secret from Jesus' mother. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. David, wherever Jesus sends you to go, just go and do it. In obedience, you are going to experience God's time. So if these people did not obey Jesus' message, they were not going to experience a miracle because Jesus had already declared that it's not my time to do these things. But out of their obedience to his word, they brought forth God's time. David, when he was obedient to Jesus' instruction, he was drawn close to God's time. Sometimes God sends us or God tells us to do something that is pushing us into his time. But we resist doing it because our flesh tells us sometimes you are too young. You are too small. You are too black. You are too poor. You are too fat. You are too slim. You are too ugly. And then we operate in disobedience and stop God's time. Tell your neighbor, obedience is one of the things that pushes you into God's time. Sometimes, I've given you an example many times that if you stay in Pretoria, for example, when I'm standing here, Pretoria is this side. Is it true? It's this side, right? Yes, this side. If you put GPS coming out of this place, the GPS will take you this side so that you may off-ramp by Allendale there. Sometimes. And then you take the freeway to go to Pretoria. Many of us, the GPS is taking us on the opposite direction. Pretoria is this side and the GPS is taking you this side and you are fighting with the GPS that you are taking me to the wrong direction and yet it's going to take you to the right direction in the future so we can sometimes switch off the GPS hallelujah even in our lives when God is directing us to a certain area we think that God is taking us astray because sometimes, according to the flesh, there's a place you think God is supposed to take you at a certain time. So you switch off your GPS and you start navigating with your mind and you miss out on God's time. Hallelujah. So if you are obedient, if God is saying run, you run. God is saying jump, you jump. Even if you know or you feel as if you're jumping or you're running, is not leading you to your destiny. God is wiser than all of us and is faithful to take you to the level that is supposed to take you in the name of Jesus. 
So I believe that from today, all of us here will experience God's time. You will experience God's season. Not by looking at our situation. Leave the situation. Focus on the kingdom. Focus on his assignment. Focus on what he's sending you to do. David was on an assignment. That's why he encountered God's time. But if you focus on who is resisting me, who is fighting me, who is attacking me, who wants to kill me, you might miss God's season and God's time because of people. Before we pray, take note of this. The people who resisted David were his own brothers. Sometimes the resistance comes from people who are close to you. Sometimes the resistance comes from families. Sometimes the resistance comes from people that are dear to you. Don't let that stop you from becoming who you're supposed to be. Always keep pushing. The four brothers had to break the roof. Keep on pushing. Keep on pressing until you hold on to what God has blessed you with. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let us rise up. God's time is the God's time is the best. Your time does not matter. So we have stopped God's time because we are focused on our time a lot. Oh Lord, my, my, my friends are buying this. Look at my age. The other ladies in, uh, that are, uh, are older than me, that are younger than me, they are getting married. I'm not yet married. You are focusing on your time and not on God's time. Hallelujah. You just be obedient in what God is sending you to do and telling you to do and then you catch up with his time. Hallelujah. I just want you to open your mouth and pray this prayer and say, Lord, give me the wisdom to know your time. Give me the wisdom to understand your timing in the name of Jesus. Turn it into prayer. Hey there, I'm F.J. Moses, the senior pastor of Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide, based in Midrand south africa and i hope this spirit life kingdom message has blessed you so tremendously that you are going to experience the god's original plan for your life for more of these spirit filled messages don't hesitate to contact us on the information on your screen good morning and be fruitful